There's a significant problem with defining aliases within a PowerShell session. I just finished creating a shortcut, an alias called NP, that maps to cwindowsnotepad.exe. And while I had that session window open, everything was great. When I ran get alias, it showed up in the list. But watch this. I closed that session, and now I'm going to come down to the taskbar and open up another new instance of PowerShell Console. If I do a get alias where the name is NP, the system cannot find a matching alias because an alias with the name NP does not exist. What the heck? Well, that's kind of how it is with these PowerShell providers. You have to just learn the lay of the land. I wish there was an easy way to know this in advance. There's really not. Because it seems obvious that if there's a new alias commandlet, wouldn't you think you should be able to create a persistent alias? Eh. So there's a couple things you can do to, to solve this problem. Let's do a get command. I'm actually going to use a alias to, of get command, where again the noun is alias. There is export and import functionality here. So you could use the new alias command to create your new alias, like I'll do right now. New alias, NP. Well, I don't want to use positional parameters. I'm actually going to use named parameters here. And again, I'll go to C Windows notepad.exe. Said that we were missing an argument. Ah, yes. I forgot to add the trigger, didn't I? No problem. Up arrow, left arrow over, find a space after the name parameter, NP space, enter, and we have ourselves a new alias. So we can export alias, tab, to get our parameters. It looks like it's asking for path. By the way, when commandlets have a positional parameter, that will helpfully show up by default such that export alias is evidently path. I would hazard a guess is a positional parameter because you need to specify where you're going to place it. And like I said, it will helpfully give you that when you cycle with the tab key. Now I'm going to put this, let's see, root of drive C. Okay, access is denied. Well, check this out. mkdir c colon backslash my work my work F. <laughs> we'll just leave that. Now mkdir looks like a cmd command, but it's not. We can use get alias and look up that name. Hmm. It didn't like that. What am I missing here? Get alias M star. Let's try that to look at only. Well, I'll be darned. Again, here I am, your instructor. I'm learning things as we go along. It looks like mkdir is actually being run as is. I could use md to create a new director. That's an old ms-dos command. And the actual command that's being run is mkdir. You know, until this moment, I always assumed that mkdir was some kind of fancy shortcut for a new item type directory or something like that, but I guess not. Well, that's kind of weird. Hmm. Well, let me up arrow. Learn something new every day. Let me up arrow a few times. And let's do export alias path c colon backslash my tab my work f. Still saying access denied for some reason. Well, I'll tell you what, let's do a help export alias show window. And let's jump down to the examples. Of course, there's many different ways to do this. Export alias path, okay, it's just giving a file name here. Or we could get, I guess, I think what our problem is we weren't providing a file name. We were simply providing a directory path. You can see how often I use this command. I don't, to be honest. And you'll see why in just a minute. I, I do have a method to my madness here, believe it or not. Export a tab path c backslash my work f aliases dot text. Okay, so that worked. 
I'm going to open Notepad. Remember, you can do external commands in PowerShell. Now, if you start bringing in external commands that have a whole bunch of switches and parameters, then PowerShell can easily get confused. But if it's just a command that exists in your system search path, if you're familiar with that, there's no problem. You can run that all day long. So I can call Notepad by typing either just Notepad, or I can use my new shortcut, my new alias. And I'll path out to my work f aliases.txt to bring that up. Now, when you do an export alias, it exports not only the ones you created, but all of them. Do you see where I'm going with this? Is this being a problem? Uh, let's see. Do I have my NP, my notepad one? I think they put it at the end of the list here. Here we go. NP, notepad, etc. So this is a CSV or a comma separated value list. But the problem, of course, is that if you do an import alias, it's going to, it meaning PowerShell is going to bark at you because you're going to be trying to overwrite a whole bunch of built in aliases that are there. So what you actually need to do is massage that output file manually, stripping away everything but your custom aliases. It's a pain in the neck, to be honest with you. Here's the secret. It's not exactly a secret, but this is what I suggest as a solution. If you're committed to using custom aliases, put them in your profile script. That way they're available every time you start the console on that computer. Now, the profile scripts don't work on remote computers if you're doing remoting. There's some other gotchas with that. There's always a gotcha. But if you're on just your administrative workstation, let's say, you could do, as long as you have a profile script created, you can open up Notepad running against dollar profile. Dollar profile is a built-in automatic variable that'll open your your Windows PowerShell profile script. And you don't have one by default. There's a couple steps you actually have to take to create a profile script. I'm not going to get into that right now because we're going to talk about creating a profile script in great detail later in the course. But the profile script is where you want to create your shortcut. So mine is, first of all, setting the location to the root of drive C because that's where I prefer to start. It's then clearing the screen. And then you've probably noticed throughout this training when I open a console window, it says, hello, I'm actually going to nuke that. And instead, let's finally create a persistent alias here. It's hard for me to type and get all this correct at the same time. Of course, we're not going to get auto-completion. There we go. Let me save my profile script. File, save, close. Let's close this session and open up a fresh session. We should notice, first of all, we don't see that hello anymore. And second, we still have our alias. Pretty cool, isn't it? So that's the long story short about using aliases. There's really not that much more I need to teach you about that, to be honest. And it fits in nicely into the next phase of this module, which is working with PowerShell providers.